Hi, this screencast is going to walk through custom option elements for the web form module for Drupal 8. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So what is a custom options element? A custom option element allows site builders to convert any HTML or SVG markup into a clickable single or multiple options element. So the use cases for this element would be, you know, identify a place on a map, select a seat on a plane, choose a part of the human body, pick a room at a hotel. And all these use cases is about providing a visual cue for someone to select something. And sometimes that's really required for selecting a seat on a plane. And for maybe filling out medical information, it's nice to present a diagram of the human body. And about these elements, yes, it converts the HTML SVG markup into kind of clickable links. Those clickable links select option value and text in the background and that text is defined via attributes in the markup so I'll show that to you in a second but then the PHP parses those option value and text attributes and then it renders it to the browser and JavaScript adds the mouse behaviors and keyboard events which create clickable links and navigatable links and it's important to bring up Twig is supported in that markup, in that template. So you can use Twig to enhance the markup. You can even use it to render custom options. And tooltips in SVG panning and zooming is also supported to create a better user experience. And a simple select menu is provided to help improve accessibility. By providing a simple select menu and even displaying it, you make it possible for people with disabilities to use a more traditional way to enter the information, especially if they can't see the visual information. So this is just some buttons, and I'm just using showing you you can click with the mouse or use the keyboard to navigate back and forth and select them. And there is a custom description with them. I'm going to demo it a little more in a second. And this is just a map, and this map is just zooming in and out, and now I'm going to zoom in on Rhode Island, which is a tiny little speck on the map, and select it. So let's go talk about one thing before I give a demo. It's like, so custom option elements also support entity references. The tricky nuance here is it requires that the option value or text match the entity references ID or label. So when I say you're referencing a series of nodes, you'd have to have the node ID match the option value, which would be the same thing as the node ID. More commonly, you'd want to have the text match. That's the more likely use case. So let's say you're doing hotel rooms. You'd have each room as a node, room one, two, three, four, and you'd have a map of the hotel and the text for each room would be room one, two, three, four. And when PHP is parsing those option values and looking at the entity references, it will synchronize them. So when someone selects room one on your map of the hotel, that will select the entity reference to room one. It's a tricky use case that we're gonna further document as people start using the module, but I wanted to tell people it exists. But let's step back and just talk about how does a custom options element work? Well, this is the markup for simple buttons. Very simple class buttons with a button subclass. And then those are the attributes, ID equals one, data name, data ID, and data name. The data ID is the value and data name is the text. You have control over what attributes you're using. ID and name are very common with a lot of SVG builders. And so also people are familiar with that with HTML markup. And SVG is very similar in the same way. That's just a simple circle being rendered with the ID being circle and a name just being the label circle. It helps to demo this, so let's just look at it for a second. This is a clean install. If we go over, I'm gonna bring this a little smaller. We go over to custom, we go to buttons. Here's the, the edit form for creating the buttons element that's gonna be reused. So we have label, description, help text. This is the markup. This is just simple twig looping through the options that the user entered. We don't have name or value because it's being pulled dynamically from the options that users would enter in a form like this. But let's stick to the template. There is help for the twig. And for SVG, you're gonna have to check off, <coughs> excuse me, these boxes to, if you wanna have rollover effects, you're gonna have to say fill with CSS. And for panning and zooming, you're gonna turn that on. This is some CSS that's driving the buttons. Very standard flex box, but you can also see how the data option value attribute, which is added by PHP to all the clickable elements, then can have behaviors added to it, hover, focus, then looking at aria checked, aria checked focus, and you can even have aria disabled for certain elements. 
And then this is just some responsive behavior using media queries to take the buttons that are going horizontal and stack them vertically. You can even do custom JavaScript. Not a common use case, but I wanted to cover it. And now these options are used to enhance the markup. They can also be used to create translatable options because this will be translated by Drupal's translation management system. Now we can show a select menu, which I'm going to do, <coughs> and turn on tooltips. This generally is how you want to integrate it. All elements by default are considered basic elements. If you want to do the anti-reference trick, you have to explicitly say, I want this custom element to be used for anti-references. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go over here, and there is a preview built in. So this is a preview, and you could see, I can click through, use a keyboard, select an element, and you can see how this is synchronized. And one little nuance that people need to understand is you can select and unselect an option. This makes it, it's a little UX improvement because then this allows people to select none if they want to. So let's go to the map because that gets more interesting. So there's a map of the United States. Let's just look at the node edit, um, it's not node edit, but the options edit form. This help text and description is displayed when someone's creating a map. I'm using a URL. I'm actually pulling the URL from the web form module. There's a, in a, a directory in this, the web form options custom module, images, US states. This is a little helper to make it a little easier for me to give you this demo. But you can then, this open file browser will open IMCA, IMCE, which is a file system for Drupal that you can use to upload your own custom v SVGs. You can also put them in a module directory, you can put them on your server, or you, can, or you cut and paste them here. I just want to emphasize that's totally possible. This does st state what the data ID, the attributes are for the value, data ID and data name. Um, you can also, it gives you a little help, you can leave it blank. You can enter a comma delimited list as well. I am turning on the SVG support for this. That's what allows those hover effects to happen because I'm replacing the color in the SVG with yellow, green, and blue. Custom CSS and JavaScript is not needed for this demo. This options allows you to enhance what's there. So look for New York. I'm going to go into New York, change the label to be New York City. Well, not New York City, New York. Here, New York, New York, why not? And then I can add a description here. I love New York. Okay, and this will be rendered. This will go on top of the SVG's default value, which is New York, and why New York. Show the select menu as well. Show the tooltip. Keep the integration the same. Go over and do a preview. We can select. And now if we get to New York, you can see that my custom option text value and description is being used. What's also important to emphasize is that it's completely translatable by Drupal and any translation management system you're using. When you're adding these to your site, you can even add your own custom description so you, you can start reusing the map and kind of enhance it. I'm going to go back up to the web form module. And let's see this in action. So we have created the definition of custom elements. Now let's see one in action. So we're going to go over to the test. We're going to create a test form. I'm going to add an element. I think I have it already set up. Oh, we have this open, but let's go to our custom elements. We have buttons, US states. We even get a preview. And I want to emphasize that this one, two, and three is dynamically just being added because there's no options defined for buttons because we're going to let users add their own buttons so they can go in. Let's do that demo here. You go in, hit add element. Uh, I'm going to say buttons. And you can even use the predefined options. Let's see if we get one that's kind of juicy. Let's see. Ethnicity. So people might want to select multiple. That's going to, you can enter your own, by the way, I want to emphasize, you can enter your own options and create your own buttons. But I'm just going to, for this go, let's look at ethnicity and let's do multiple. And because this is enhancing a select menu, you can even say, you know what, you select two. Make it a little nicer, prettier UX. Everything you expect from a web form element is still completely supported when this is rendered. Let's stick to what we have. We can make it required. Hit save. Go to view. There's our gender. We can select multiple. Well, not gender, I'm sorry. Ethnicities. You can select multiple. You can close these. They're synchronized perfectly. I hope this gives you a full demo of what's, what's really possible. And let's, let's go back to the slides. And you can build any type of element using this system, any type of clickable visual element that you want. 
And so what's next for the custom options element module? Well, it's experimental. It's marked experimental. You know, you need to, if you use it, make sure when you do updates, you test it. I'm not trying to break anyone's site, but I want to have some flexibility so that people can experiment. We can provide better examples and, you know, figure out what's next, which is, is really to show what is and isn't possible using this system. And we might need to add some additional hooks or templates <clears throat> to help out with this user experience and site builder experience. Um, there is a great opportunity here for someone to provide a dedicated contrib module for maps. There's lots of open source free SVG maps on the web, and you just need to get those into a module, set up the right attributes, and suddenly Webform module has a full mapping system that people can select from. And as always, with everything we're doing, we want to perform full accessibility reviews. My hope is as people use it in their own audits, they might find issues and bring, you know, help resolve minor accessibility issues cannot emphasize how important that select menu displaying it is for accessibility. I think that guarantees that people with disabilities will be able to complete your form by providing an alternate clear drop down menu that someone can just fill out using a screen reader or keyboard. And just some vinyl tips and tricks, really, that storing HTML and SVG markup in a remote file makes your life a lot easier. It helps you structure it. And yeah, I do want to emphasize that custom JavaScript and CSS is supported. Those options are translatable if they're entered into the form. Otherwise, you'd have to create SVGs for every single language, which I think is a little redundant and a lot of work. Third time I'm emphasizing that select menu helps with accessibility. And finally, that those descriptions and help text that you would enter on the definition of the custom option element is displayed to end users when they're creating these elements, and you can provide a lot of guidance there. And I just want to end, end emphasizing, you know, this is a lot of power here. You can do almost anything. You can create markup, CSS, JavaScript, SVG. There's no filtering. There's no limitation on what you can render to the output, but it comes with great responsibility. Make sure that the people who are allowed to build these elements, those are only right now people who can administer the web form modules configuration, um, which makes a lot of sense because at that level, you are able to enter custom CSS and JavaScript. I mean, this is adding that layer you can enter custom markup to. And, you know, I want to emphasize who sponsored, you know, the custom options feature. And this feature was sponsored by Steve Babbitt from Mile 3. You know, he had a client who needed this feature. He read my blog post about sponsoring a feature and decided to, you know, reach out to me in the Webflow Modules issue queue. And we've been talking for the past month and a half. And we, we worked on some other features together and we realized this would be a really helpful feature for his client and the community. And how can you sponsor a feature? Well, if you want to sponsor a feature, read my blog post, create a ticket in the web for modules issue queue. The blog post is on my site, jrockwoods.com slash blog slash sponsor a feature. And you can learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Thank you.